Hello, welcome, Wickerson Studios. Sorry for that delay. This is a Git Creative series, uh, Grasshopper for Rhino, which I'm going to continue. It comes out of the Generative Algorithms using Grasshopper by Zubin Kabazi. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. Here's a little quick render of simple geometric kind of finding. I'm going to jump down to that. Uh, I'm looking at another document right now. I'm pulling a couple of scripts that might be relevant in the, I think it's part three or chapter three of that section. Pretty awesome to run through and find out where you are with all the geometries that you're used to. But when you get down to the generating uh, design three, uh, generating geometry, you're going to basically start taking logics uh, that uh, might use the um, greater than or less than symbols to generate. Uh, basically, uh, we'll leave this rendering for a second. This is the rendering we're going to end up making. And here it is uh, being generated. We'll put it in shaded. And here it is, not too hard. We'll take the geometries and we'll put them in the hiding. And uh, what happens with that is we're going to grab a little bit of a script that generates not just a Boolean, um, you know, true false as a as a panel telling you what's true or false. Let's put enable on and show you quickly right here. Pretty cool uh, thing. And I'm going to get rid of the other one right now because we don't need that. We'll hit disable. And we're basically looking at this geometry uh, from a series of points. Very simple script. Populating a geometry comes up. I found a list like to give me an average number, and I probably do need to pull out a little bit of a piece of data. Uh, so we're dealing with about 100 units, and that's that should have been a given because that was the count. That's the default on the count. If you extract a parameter, this will be 100 as well. Um, I find a list item. I just bounce around through those 100 list items, whatever I want. And as I bounce around through all those list items, I take all the points coming out to that point as an attractor, find the distance between the two, and I put it in as a test as a larger than or less than series and give it a certain length as to what I want it to be. So if I end up grabbing those points and those points, I end up building lines in this first one that if they're less than, actually if they're greater than, they'll actually become lines. And if I go down here to the uh, items that are less than, if it's less than those, then they end up becoming lines. What a great way to think of geometry. You start piping those and putting those on undulating surfaces, you've got some pretty cool script and you end up building some pretty cool things. So let's leave again. And this is directly out of those uh, those scripted uh, programs. I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to jump back into this one, which I have activated and I've added to it. I, I try to learn things, but I also want to, um, in a sense, here it is. Uh, it's just taking a little while to load. Uh, here's the geometries as they're fully completed as we go into them. And I can leave them, and they should come on here. Uh, and I'll show you what I basically wrote into that script. Now, what I'm stuck on doing here is I definitely wanted to grab some uh, grab a curve. And that curve is parametric. So if I take that curve and I decide, nah, I don't want a curve like that. I want a curve like this, right? And that could be kind of crazy. Uh, let's take that curve and let's just double it up and let's set one curve to this one and let's see what happens if, well, we'll do that after. Right now we have this outer curve. We'll take this one and we'll just put that in hiding as well. But we have this curve and we're finding the center point on it. No problem. And I'll try and make this interesting uh, by holding shift. So you have the center and you end up finding the center. I'm going to actually scale that and I scale it in a range. And you've seen me do this before. As long as you set your steps to X minus one, in the uh, expression node, you go in here and hit, uh, I have to move it over so you see that because I have double screens, uh, x minus 1. You can take a, ser uh, a range, which will run through a range, a domain, and then into the range of that domain. And of course, I'm scaling between uh, 0.1 and 0.95. And I could change that, so I actually uh, change the range so it's not 0.1 through 1. And I think I'll actually make it a little smaller so I, I do change the geometry so we can see the difference. Uh, that scale then goes through a move up in the Z direction, which is pretty simple, and we'll take off this one. We took that through a Z direction and did the same thing. And I'm not doing a jitter or anything strange like that, which I could very well do. And that goes through a range and domain and all the way through from 0 to 10 uh, in the Z direction. I then took points on curves, and I flattened all that because I wanted to deal with all the points. And once I take all the points out of there, I not only grabbed a list item from all these points, that one, very similar to what I did in the script above. I can change that at any time on the index to whatever I want. I'm pulling a distance between all those points and this point uh, and this point and all those points and basically finding a distance. And then if it's less than that, it'll tell me if it's true or false. And if it's greater than that, it'll tell me if it's not. Uh, I then find, uh, I deconstruct the plane and then take the Z coordinate, find out what's above. And then I put it through a gate and say, okay, I've called those out. So now I'm only dealing with these points. 
So not only do I have those points, I also have all those points. And I also have, uh, possibly if I put this on, take this off, you'll see everything. So I can either choose all the points or I can choose the called list of points, which are basically dealing with distance. And that distance of called points is changed by the fact that I change, sorry, this is the geometry I change to affect that as to what is the uh, greater than distance. And that provides me a certain amount of points on a bunch of points. And then what I do is I grab a surface. And what I like is I like messing with my surfaces. If we leave this, you'll see if I change my u clown, I can get some incredible geometries. And I'm not one to be the engineer exact, you know, pure mathematician that I kind of went into school to do. I'm much more interested in that uh, u count that ends up making a geometry like that rather than that. And maybe I even want this geometry. But in grabbing all those wonderful geometries through here, I can bake that into kind of for rendering purposes only at this point. I can take that into a bake put it in and say, let's join. And there, I've got a pretty cool little geometry that I can play with. And I can go back into here and grab the points, which are only a selection of points within that. And I can change how many I want on there by moving this. And our script is, uh, I'm not sure if I have my display uh, widget, canvas widgets on profiler, but I think I do. So yeah, display widgets, profiler on. Nope, none of these scripts are taking an outrageous amount of time to do. And I've got pretty standard sized spheres. I could always take the spheres and run them through a range and a domain and have a jitter node and have them all bounce around and maybe I'll just show you that. Ah, forget it. I already had another thing I wanted to do. So I've got these two geometries. I've got this one baked. This one I'm going to go into and I'm going to bake. And boom, we have another model right here in front of us. Join them together and there they are. And as I leave this, I can go into here and hit rendered and I end up with this other kind of rendered form that I can start to have this pretty cool landscape with these awkward little tiny thing, be it people or cities or houses or entities or whatever you want. Um, that said, let's go back to uh, shaded and let's grab all these geometries, get rid of them. What happens when I go into here and have all these geometries and put in a totally different curve? So I've got a pretty cool script that I don't even have to play with. I literally can hold down control shift and drag the inputs to this curve and give it a second. Bam, you end up with a totally different geometry. If you want to do the same, go in and grab this curve, you know, whatever. Have fun. This is the hand of the artist and you can think. This doesn't direct the hand of a painter or a sculptor when they first pick up wax. You're kidding yourself. This is what it's all about. So I'm going to hit make another set of curves. I'm going to set that to set one curve. There it is. I'm going to hit Control Shift, pull that out, pop that in there, and bam, we have a totally different uh, geometry that's running. And, and there's the spheres that are collecting on that side and all throughout it. You throw that back into a render. Um, you end up leaving this. You go back into your material supplies. You grab the spheres which are all on a group list, I believe. It's best to leave this in, not, uh, yeah, in rendered. I shouldn't have trouble grabbing those, but I am. So let's go into shaded. Oh, I haven't, that's the problem. I like to make mistakes in front of everybody because it shows I'm human. Um, you're going to have to go in and grab this, bake that onto one level, bake onto, I think it just baked on its own. It's taking a second. And then grab this one and bake that one and leave grasshopper by putting your visualization on what you're clicking. And there you go. You have your geometries. Now we go back into here and hit rendered. We grab the spheres. And I, of course, did not select them all. And they're not of one piece already group. I'm going to select these ones as a slime one object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that object just temporarily. And I'm going to uh, probably best at this point just to keep it, put it on this layer here, change object layer and hide it. Then I can grab all these and I can throw them into uh, a group, uh, group those objects. That should be fine. And then I can grab all these, oops, without moving them. I can go back into materials. And where did they go? Wonderful. They disappeared on me. Fantastic. I'm just going a little too fast for myself this afternoon. Let's hit delete and go back. Uh end up leaving. Let's go back in a wireframe. I think I've lost everything, which is awesome. I went too fast. There's that original one. Ah, maybe I'll just stay with this original one. Go into perspective, uh, grab this one, throw that surface on there and uh, throw it in the render and then grab the spheres, which are actually in one group and throw them on. Sorry, this one. And there we go. Hit enter. And I should be able to leave that script and they're transparent. I've got something weird going on behind. 
I can go into taking these curves by shifts, selecting them and put them in the hidden. And then I should be able to take it over to the ray trace and have a pretty good object that will render in probably five minutes or ten minutes. Of course, it's taking a little bit of time here, so it must be the glass. So it's not too bad. It's kind of an awkward little one that you end up making. Anyhow, sorry for the slowdown on that. We went about ten minutes just dealing with the renders. But not bothering with the renders, it's a pretty simple script that you can go through. I've affected the surface, so obviously with that U count, I'm not getting a surface. So you've got to play with this U count until you end up getting one that actually functions and uh, ran into a little bit of problems with it. Lost my original curve. That's what I did. So let's just grab this, control edit, put that back into there. Oh, I lost my curve. And then let's go back in and see what uh, U count actually makes a geometry. And go back in and jump it around like crazy. Total chaos is what I like. Let's take this and put it in hiding. There's your new geometry. Uh, pretty cool. And if we put it on here, we can actually see which geometries are on both uh, by leaving. And we've got both geometries going. There's the spheres. There's the points. There's everything. So hopefully you followed that. Uh, it's a nice little script, but it gets you thinking logically and dealing with greater than or less than to actually build geometries, landscapes, objects, towns, cities, whatever you want. Hope you enjoyed it. It's my mind.